NASCAR's 75th anniversary season has officially been kicked off with the Daytona 500 and its most successful driver to date has won the Daytona 500. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won the Daytona 500. That is right. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a Daytona 500 champion. This may come as a surprise to some of you. He was 30 to 1 odds, I think. Long shot. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is an underrated plate racer, though. He had two career wins prior to today, both of them at Super Speedway races. But, but, both of them were almost six years ago. The Talladega Spring Race back in 2017 when he was with, at the time, Roush Fenway Racing, and the other one at the July Daytona Race. So it's... Five and a half years, I guess we can call it, since he's last one. It has been a long while since Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has been in victory lane, but he's still been a good super speedway racer. He's led some laps. He's been up front, but today it all came together. And we have to look at the second to last restart, actually. He restarted first on that last restart, and he was able to hold on, I guess. I guess that's what we can call it. He almost lost the lead there going into turn one, but he was able to get a big push from Christopher Bell to go get it back. But the restart before, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. restarted sixth, and someone said that he was going to win. I don't know who this genius might be, but that guy is a genius, whoever said that at the time. Anyways, point being, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was sixth on that second to last restart. He executed everything right. He got the right push. The RCR guys were up front squabbling around where Austin Dillon was on the inside giving up the lead to Kyle Busch. It was going to be that thing where he kind of drags the brake a little bit or lets off the accelerator for a half second, accelerates a little bit slower, lets Kyle Busch in the inside line, and it stacked him up, but it gave them a big push, and suddenly they were all separated. And the outside line suddenly had all the momentum, and they were going around top. Joey Logano was in the lead. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was right behind him. And Kyle Larson was right on Ricky Stenhouse's bumper. Logano suddenly had a big push out front. Logano was way out in front of everyone else. And Stenhouse and Larson were locked together. Larson pushed Stenhouse out of, way out in front of Logano. And as he took the lead from Logano and Larson took second place, everyone wrecked behind him. Austin Dillon in about the third or fourth row on the inside got tagged and took out 10 15, maybe even 20 cars with him. It was a huge crash. I don't think it was Austin Dillon's fault. I think he just got hit at the wrong angle. Point being, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. led from there on, kind of. Stenhouse was able to manage himself. He was able to hold off a fight from Joey Logano. He was side by side with Logano when coming into turn one, or really exiting one into two, Larson got clipped by Pastrana, who had got hit at a bat angle from Eric Almarola, and that sent everyone crashing. Larson went head on into the outside wall, spinning backwards, some sparks, a lot of smoke, and NASCAR said, all right, too many cars crashing, too many cars in the wall going the wrong direction, lots of hard hits, let's check on them. They threw the caution, and when they threw the caution, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won the commercial five, I mean the Daytona 500. Yes, what a win. For Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Obviously, as I said, he had two career wins prior to this, and JTG Doherty even had a win prior to this, but we thought Stenhouse had a long winless drought, 199 races in six years almost. JTG Doherty had a longer winless streak. They hadn't won since 2014 with AJ Allmendinger at Watkins Glen. I don't know how many races that is, but JTG Doherty back in victory lane with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and not just back in victory lane, Daytona 500 victory lane, a career milestone for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., a career milestone for JTG Doherty Racing. They've been partnered up for two, three, maybe four years now, and, uh, you know, they've had their runs. They've had some good runs. I think they had a runner-up at the initial, the inaugural Bristol Dirt Race. They've had some good super speedway runs. They had even had a couple top tens last year. I think it's a mile and a half, but it hasn't quite come to that victory yet they haven't exactly been able to get to victory lane and it's been close a couple times but today it finally all came together and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a Daytona 500 champion I can't believe I'm saying that and he had to be one of the best super speedway racers to do it he had to beat Joey Logano 
Joey Logano, the 2015 Daytona 500 champion, won his duel this week. It was a great, great race by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He did everything right. And at the end there, sure, the caution helped out. Who knows what would have happened that last three quarters of a lap, but it doesn't matter. The history books will show. That Harley J. Earl trophy will show. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a Daytona 500 champion. But yes, uh, you may have heard me reference the commercial 500 earlier. Um, I usually forget about this stuff by the time I get to the video, but today it was so bad, I got to talk about it. The Daytona 500 is one of the biggest races of the year. We celebrate it. It's the opening race of the season in high anticipation. It's the biggest race in NASCAR. It's NASCAR Super Bowl. I get that commercials pay the bills for these big networks, Fox, NBC, whoever's broadcasting the race. Today, though, oh my goodness, the first like half of three quarters of the race, it was ridiculous, like uh, beyond absurd. There was literally a point where there was three laps in between commercial breaks and there was a big crash as they cut to commercial breaks. They cut to commercial breaks during green flag pit stops when a group had a big run on the team or the group coming out uh, to get together to try to take the lead and there was some shuffling that went on that we missed um it was genuinely the commercial 500 i think the longest run we had in the first half of the race with laps without a commercial was nine laps maybe maybe 10 maybe we got to double digits but i understand you need to pay the bills i really do but my goodness we can't even get double digit laps without throwing a bunch of commercials in and then when a crash happens on the side-by-side, -side, we have to do the whole five-minute commercial span. It was absurd today. It really was. I get you need your commercials. Full-screen commercials in NASCAR I don't think have a place. I think the side-by-side -side thing is a great idea. I think it works. But this isn't like football. There's not timeouts. There's not, you know, halftime where you can throw all the commercials. And that makes it difficult, yes. But... I think the only time that full screen commercial should happen is during cautions. That is the only time it should happen. And now you have stage breaks. Stage breaks are added cautions. Throw the full screen commercials in there and then have your split screen happen during the green flag action. The amount of full screen commercials there were today was ridiculous. I think the first half of the race, we probably saw under 40 laps. It was ridiculous. Even Fox Sports Twitter was getting, as the kids say, ratioed because they had so many commercials. It was ridiculous. Um, yeah, uh, that it was extremely annoying as a fan. Um, the fact that I had to talk about this for so long is ridiculous. Like, Fox just, why so many commercials? I know you're getting paid a lot of money to put up those commercials, but I, I wanted to watch a NASCAR race, not commercials. That's ridiculous. You needed to cut back. Even media members were tweeting out, we see your comments, we see your responses. We're sorry that you have to deal with this. It sucks. So, all right, I'm done with that rant. Uh, if you want a longer rant, tell me in the comments. I'll make another video. We got to talk about the race. The Daytona 500, the biggest race of the year. NASCAR Super Bowl. Ricky Stenhouse is the champion. We saw some Cup Series champions, though, who had their best opportunity to win the Daytona 500, but they once again fell short. Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski and Chris Buescher. If this race was 12 years ago, one of those two cars wins. When they those two were up front, they were almost unstoppable. They'd get nose to tail, and they would push each other, push each other, and they would hold on to the lead, top, bottom, wherever it was. Those two were a dynamic duo. But when it came to the late race, when there, the field had been narrowed out a bit, there was about six cars. Out of those six cars up front, they were the only two Fords. And behind them was Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon, teammates, William Byron, another Chevy, and I think it was Stenhouse in sixth. And five, six to go, Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon and William Byron and Stenhouse say, Peace. They go to the top, they pass them. Brad Keselowski and Chris Busch are all of a sudden are left hanging and they go backwards outside of the top 10. Brad Keselowski may be his best look at the Daytona 500 since 2021. This time it didn't quite go up in flames like it did back in 2021, but it essentially put him out of contention. He would have needed a couple more cautions to get back up to the front and he didn't get those couple of extra cautions. 
In fact, he was involved in that last wreck, but Kozlowski's best shot, suddenly gone. Speaking of other champions who didn't win the Daytona 500, I just said Kyle Busch had taken the lead there. Three to go, he was leading this thing. He had his teammate behind. It could have been like last fall where he has his teammate as a blocker or maybe Austin Dillon pushes him out in front and waits till the absolute last second. You get an RCR photo finish. At least RCR, Richard Childress, is getting the win in the 500. It's just a matter of who, but unfortunately for Kyle Busch, three to go. Daniel Suarez spins, gets stuck in the grass. They have to throw the caution, and it's overtime. And Kyle Busch picks the top, Dillon the bottom. This is the first ever super speedway race we've had a choose rule, so there's going to be a lot of learning with it. Usually in the past, if you were 1-2 with a teammate at super speedways, the leader would pick the top, second place the bottom, because it doesn't matter who's behind you. They have to line up however they're ordered in the field. Leader slides up in front, and you push them out in front on the bottom. People had a choice this time. And I honestly think, well, hindsight's twenty twenty, so and I, I'm a fan, so I don't really know anything. They should have gone nose to tail on the bottom. With everyone picking behind you, no one wants to help you, and they're going to line up however they think is the best way they can win. It's a fact of the matter. Kyle Busch slides down. That whole bottom lane stacks up. The top lane gets a huge run. That's what happened. It lost Kyle Busch the race. If they stay bottom, front to tail with Bush and Dylan, I'm not saying I guarantee them a win, but I think it gives them a better shot. And that ultimately cost Kyle Busch a chance at his first Daytona 500. So yes, uh, we will talk about the other incidents when we go through the results of the race. That's right. We're going to talk about the results of this race. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., I think as Mike Joy once said, the pride and joy of Olive Branch, Mississippi. Um, I don't know where in Mississippi Olive Branch is, but if you're from Olive Branch, you're a big Ricky Stenhouse Jr. fan. Congratulations. Congratulations to Ricky Stenhouse Jr., JTG Doherty. We've talked about them already. A huge, huge win for that organization. Uh, the biggest race of the year, the biggest trophy, the biggest paycheck. That's how you want to do it. And of course, if we don't get more than 16 winners, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is in the NASCAR playoffs. you got to think about that. So uh, we'll see how Stenhouse does the rest of the season. We'll see if, uh, if, if, if. JTG Doherty can translate the speed at the super speedways outside of the super speedways. As I said, they had a couple top 10 runs at some mile and a half last year. And of course, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he's done some dirt stuff before. So could he get a second win at Bristol Dirt? And now that they got this win, they can take some gambles. Late race restart, stay out on old tires. See if you can get another win. Two wins. That essentially locks you into the playoffs. So we'll see how Ricky Stenhouse Jr. does. It will be interesting. But he is now forever a Daytona 500 champion. Joey Logano finishes second, oh so close to that second Daytona 500 champion uh, ring, and he could not quite do it. Really, honestly, a pretty solid day for Logano. Stayed out of trouble, never really got involved in any wrecks. Um, kept it clean. I think he got some stage points, and he was up there contending at the end, and he's a pretty solid super speedway racer. He's aggressive when he needs to be aggressive. He's calm when he needs to be calm. He's an underrated super speedway racer. He hasn't won in a super speedway in quite a while, but this was about the closest he's been in recent years. And if that if that race goes green, could he have won it? That's a question I think he's going to be asking himself for a while. But Joey Logano, fresh off the championship, still a runner-up finish in the Daytona 500. Nothing to be ashamed of. Third place, Christopher Pell. Uh, I've never really thought of him as a super speedway racer, but he avoided everything today. Stayed up front. Helped push Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at some point, and there he is in third. Fourth place, Chris Buescher. Uh, he's an underrated super speedway racer. Denny Hamlin said that in the pre-race show. He had a really good day today. Led a good chunk of laps. I want to say 30 or 40 laps today he led. A really good, really good race for the guy from Prosper, Texas. A uh, really good race. Led a bunch of laps. Him and Keselowski looked great on the super speedways. We'll see how they do this season. It's going to be an interesting year for RFK. Fifth place, Alex Bowman. Uh, Bowman, usually well known for his qualifying in the Daytona 500, has not always had the results though. A top five today. I don't think he got involved in any wrecks. I think he kept it fairly clean. He had one incident on pit road with Noah Gregson. I don't know what happened because Fox didn't show it because it was probably during a commercial. 
the reporters on Twitter were saying that indeed something did happen between Gregson and Bowman on pit road. Not a fight or anything, but you know, just going into the box or something. I don't know, but they made contact, had to patch it up, just cosmetic damage, nothing big. And obviously Bowman able to get a top five. AJ Allmendinger finished the sixth in his full-time debut for colleague in the Cup Series. He was leading late in this one with about 12, 13 to go. Couldn't hold on to that race lead, obviously, but a sixth place finish, respectable. Seventh place, Daniel Suarez. Uh, Suarez was spinning, as I said, with three to go. Two restarts later, comes back and rallies for a top 10. Oh my, I thought Suarez rallied. Eighth place, Ryan Blaney. Was in that first wreck where Reddick got hit at the wrong angle by Harvick and everyone went wrecking. Elliott was involved, Reddick was involved, Blaney was involved, Jones was involved. Blaney's car looked destroyed. He was the cause of another caution because his tire went flying off. He had a bunch of duct tape on his hood. It was all bent up and scruffed up. Looked like it was ready for the dumpster. Eighth place, apparently. Hell of a job, Ryan Blaney. Ninth place, Ross Chastain, double top 10 for the track house racing cars. 10th place, oh my gosh, Rick Ware racing top 10 with Riley Herbst. <laughs> Let's go. You love to see it, man. You love to see it. Herbst spun onto pit road, his first attempt at getting onto NASCAR Cup Series pit road. I can't believe it. I, we've seen Rick Ware racing top 10s before. Usually it's David Reagan in that car, and David Reagan's an, he's an exceptional super speedway racer, but... Riley Herbst is still in the Xfinity Series. He's still yet to get his first career win in the Xfinity Series. He's in Cup Series, his first career start for Rick Ware Racing. 100% top 10 finishing rating for Riley Herbst. Wow. 11th place, another guy to be happy for, Travis Pastrana. What a story. The stuntman, X Games gold medalist, the rally car champion, the guy who loves adr adrenaline. He'll jump out of a plane, he'll flip a motorcycle, he'll drive a car off a ramp over a lake of sharks. Whatever he has to do to be epic. Finishes 11th in his NASCAR Cup Series debut. He had a great day. Uh, this whole week, he seemed so happy. He just... He was just happy to be there. I mean, that's genuinely what he was. He gets out of the car after qualifying. They make the 500. He was the happiest person at that racetrack. They go in the duels. He got involved in a wreck. He was still happy to be there. The car was, re it was repairable. He was happy to be there. He finishes 11th. I can't imagine how he's feeling. He was one, one spot away from the top 10, but man, Travis Pastrana, what a race for him. 12th place in his final Daytona 500. Kevin Harvick got involved in one of those late race crashes. 12th. 13th, Zane Smith in his Cup Series debut. Good for him. 14th, Cody Ware. Double Rick Ware Racing Top 10. Rick Ware Racing Supremacy. Yes, it is time for Rick Ware Racing to take over NASCAR. 15th, Corey LaJoy. He, did he lead laps? I know he was in second at one point, but he was up front there for a bit. 15th. 16th, Martin Truex Jr. Everyone thought today was going to be his day. February 19th, his 19th Daytona 500 in the 19 car. He got wrecked again. He, Dude, I'm telling you, he cannot. He just has the worst luck at super speedways. Talladega last spring was about the best chance he had in recent years since that 2016 500. Every other time, I think he's wrecked. He truly has the worst super speedway luck. Luck. 17th, Denny Hamlin. 18th, Kyle Larson. He was up there competing for the win before he got absolutely demolished there at the end. He was released from the care center. 19th, Kyle Busch. We talked about him earlier. Maybe his best shot to win the Daytona 500. And a late race restart decided it. He kind of got screwed. Tough luck. He was my pick to win. Tough luck. 20th, Bubba Wallace. He got some damage early on. It seemed like it really just affected the rest of his day he was never able to really lead a line something was broke inside the car tough tough day for him that's all i really got to say so yeah tough day for him 21st almirola 22nd keselowski as i said really good day for him led a lot of laps got involved in one of those late race crashes um but led 40 50 laps won a stage really good day for him 
23rd, Austin Sendrick. 24th, Noah Gregson. 25th, Ty Gibbs. 26th, Harrison Burton. He was leading some laps there late. 27th, Ty Gillen. 28th, Michael McDowell. 29th, Connor Daly. Avoided chaos, avoided the wrecks. Top 30 for him. 30th, BJ McLeod. Get live from McLeod, ladies and gentlemen. 31st, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson actually had a really good race up until he got wrecked with about, what, three to go? One of those last three starts he got wrecked. <sighs> he actually got some stage points. I think he got like seventh in stage one. Really good race for Jimmy Johnson until he got wrecked, but I'm sure he had fun. 32nd, Justin Haley. 33rd, Austin Dillon. 34th, William Byron. 35th, Chase Briscoe. 36th, Ryan Priest led a few laps there. 37th, Eric Jones, 38th, Chase Elliott, 39th, Tyler Reddick, and 40th, Ty Dillon. Ty Dillon, very early mechanical problem, and that, that ruined his day. Like, 20 laps into this race, Ty Dillon was donezo. Yeah, that is your Daytona 500 finishing results. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is the Daytona 500 champion. Did you know, fun fact of the day for you. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has more wins than Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Chase Elliott, Mark Martin, um, man, who else? Tony Stewart, Kyle Larson combined. Is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. the greatest driver of all time? Next at 10. Uh, just kidding, though. Really happy for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Really happy for that team. Just a fun result. Fun, fun result. It's always fun to get a weird, wacky winner. Um, it's always fun to see an upset. Two years ago when McDowell did it, it was fun. 12 years ago when Bain did it, it was fun. Uh, it's always fun to see an upset winner. And when it happens in the biggest race, it's so fun, man. So thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. My playoff bracket is now ruined. Thanks to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Despite that, I'm still happy for him. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. NASCAR is back. I get to say it again. We have a race next week. Auto Club. I'm looking forward to it. I will see you guys there. It's going to be the last race at the two-mile oval, though. But the Daytona 500 is over. We wait till next year.